Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in with me. I hope to deliver this lesson in one take because it's raining on me, it's been raining, and it's just slowed down enough for me to shoot this, and I have to do it tonight if I'm to get it out by Monday morning. And by the way, today's subject matter has to do with wristiness in the putting stroke, and I deliver it knowing that some people are likely to disagree with me, but I can bear that very well because if it helps one person, then it's worth it to me. Back in the fall, I played golf with a guy uh, whom I'd played with many times 25 years ago. And I remember 25 years ago, him missing a short putt and then saying, uh, lamenting, oh, man, I can't keep my wrist out of the putt. And little things like that, for whatever reason, they'll stick with me. Little, little insignificant things at the time will be something that I can recall years later. And I remember him saying that because just this past fall, I played with him again. And on the third hole, he got up there and had about a four foot putt and putted it, missed it and went, ah, I can't keep my wrist. This is 25 years later. He's saying the same thing. And so there's that. Let's, let's put that in the vault here and move on and I'll revisit that in just a moment. When it comes to success and failure, when someone's struggling, if, if we've had any in-depth conversations, then you probably know that my belief when it comes to whether someone is successful or when uh, someone is not or when someone is experiencing a lot of difficulty, oftentimes it just comes down to uh, incompatible desires. What do I mean by that? Well, that means that when someone fails, you've got to ask yourself, what was it you were trying to do at the same time that was preventing you from doing that? For instance, uh, someone wants to go conquer their industry. They want to be the world's greatest widget salesman. But they, that's their desire. But they also, to the same degree, also want to not have to get out of bed until 11 o'clock in the morning. Those are incompatible wishes. Those are incompatible desires. You can't have both of those. Uh, well, that's a macro version of what I'm talking about. Another macro would be simply, I want to become a great golfer this year, but I also want to not have to practice. Those are incompatible. Well, let's get into the micro here. You cannot be a great putter if you have these two incompatible desires. I want to make this putt. That's my desire. I want to make this putt but I also want to make sure that I don't use my wrist. Now, those are incompatible, believe it or not, and here's the reason they are. Because you might say, well, wait a minute, all the best putters in the world do it in a wristless manner. To take wrist action out would be a good thing. Why can you possibly say that for someone to try to take wrist out of the putting stroke would be a bad thing? I'll tell you why. Because you're absolutely correct. Those people who are the best putters in the world have established a habit of putting without their wrist. They do it, they have established that habit apart from actually playing the game. In other words, they practice so much that this wristless stroke is something they can do now without having to think of. But the individual who at the same time is trying to make the putt and at the same time trying to replace restraint on their hands has a thunderbolt in their confidence. And that is they're trying to entertain a positive, that is try to make the putt and a negative, try not to use your wrist at the same time. And that leads to muscular tension, tension leads to doubt, doubt leads to fear, and fear is crippling. That person can never put a, put a smooth, uh, relaxed stroke on the golf ball. They simply cannot because they're torn between a positive uh, and a negative. This is not much different than the runway model uh, who in her first show is half thinking about how she's been trained to walk and half thinking about making sure she doesn't fall down and make a fool of herself. She's never gonna look as relaxed and elegant as the person who's been doing it a long time. And so, you know, it's like me walking out of my house in the morning. I don't remind myself not to fall in the bushes. I just walk to my car and my pursuit is single-minded of something I want to do to the omission, to the exclusion of that which I don't want to do. So my thing is this, what would I tell this person who's been doing this for 25 years? I would say that you have proven by this point that you simply cannot putt in a wristless manner. So it's time to stop trying. If you're not gonna set time aside to go learn that and always try to just concentrate it only in play, then you're gonna be doomed to disappointment and never get yourself out of this. Instead, decide that you're a wristy putter and then try to control it. Because after all, that's a positive. I'm a wristy putter, I'm gonna use my wrist, I'm gonna use whatever method comes up, and I'm going to stroke that putt. If I have to use a little wrist, I use a little wrist. If I feel more like using a lot of wrist, then I use a lot of wrist. But in either case, I can putt in a way that feels comfortable to me. I'm not placing restraint on myself. And so let me say that again. If you're one of these people who has for a long period of time been struggling with trying to simply get the wrist out of the putting stroke, then it's time to take the shackles off. Decide that you're a wristy putter and then try to control it. You'll be much better off. You can, you can at least relax when you're playing and not two and a half decades later exclaim once again, ah, I simply can't get the, putting, uh, get the wrist out of the putting stroke. You'll be better for it. I want to thank you for watching. Stay dry and I'll see you soon.